Hello, hello, I'm Breton, one of our MCAT tutors here at Inspira Advantage, where we help students get into med school and other professional programs. Today, we're gonna to discuss how light causes nerve impulses, the difference between rods and cones, and how to treat poor vision. This is a very high yield topic for the MCAT, so you'll wanna be sure to take notes on this. First, let's briefly recap the essential eye anatomy you need to know. Light passes through the cornea, then the pupil, then the lens, before finally hitting the retina. This is the area we're going to explore more deeply today. The first thing to realize is that not all retina is created equally. The most important part of the retina for sharp vision is the fovea centrialis, often abbreviated just the fovea. The fovea is within the macula. The reason the fovea allows us to see so clearly is because it is packed tightly with a type of photoreceptor cell called a cone. Humans have three different types of cone cells that allow us to interpret wavelengths from 400 to 700 nanometers as the colors we see. Other animals can have more or fewer cones and thus have an expanded or reduced visual spectrum. While there are cones dispersed throughout the retina, they are mostly densely packed in the fovea. Other parts of the retina have more of another type of photoreceptor cell called rods. Rods respond to the presence or absence of light and allow us to see in black and white vision. This is why it's easier to see light out of the corners of your eyes, the corner of your visual field. Now, this doesn't mean that there aren't rods in the fovea. There just is a higher concentration of cones to rods in the fovea. Likewise, there are some cones in the rest of the eye, just not that many compared to the amount of rods. Rods and cones both work similarly to each other. Both contain an opsin type G protein coupled receptor that go from a trans in the dark to cis in the light. This trans-cis transition causes a signal within the rod or cone to occur. Ultimately, this signal reaches the occipital lobe and the perception of vision occurs. For the processing, there are two types of cells you should be aware of. There are magnocellular cells, which have high temporal resolution, which means that they are essentially used for tracking the movement of objects, and parvocellular cells, which have high spatial resolution. These help you recognize objects. The way I like to remember this is magnocellular starts with an M, so does movement, and parvocellular is the other one. Finally, we want to talk about the most common eye question the MCAT will ask, which is how to treat myopia or hyperopia. Myopia means you can't see things far away. Physically, this means that the focal plane of the object is in front of the retina. So this causes the eyeball to look kind of squished. To correct this, we need to move the focal plane backwards onto the retina. This can be done by using a simple diverging lens. The way that diverging lenses are often showed on the MCAT are like this. A diverging lens will, will diverge the light, so that way the focal plane moves back onto the retina where it should be. Conversely, hyperopia is where you can't see things that are close up. Physically, this is caused by the focal plane being behind the retina. This is usually caused by a squished eye in a taller direction, but less wide. A converging lens can fix this by moving the focal plane forwards onto the retina. Focal planes are usually symbolized like this. Now you know everything you need to know about the eye and how to fix myopia or hyperopia. Thank you so much for watching our video on eye physiology, and I will see you next time.